And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra. It is that time once again to enter the Valley of the Judged. And with me, as, uh, as always, are... are the man of a thousand runes, and the CEO of Zadari Enterprises, and the bane of my fucking existence, good brother Zan, and the and the man who is who is currently playing, um, ride of the Valkyries in his head while while riding on a giant airship, good brother Ash, how are we doing Hi. tonight? Doing well. Unragged, but I'm all good. All right, so. For the first time in a in a while, we have something not class related in this in this level up series. This time we are tackling inspiration and destiny. And at first, when I saw the title, at, at first I thought I was going to have to break out my old copy of Star Wars Saga Edition, which is still a, which is still a damn good game, by the way. And look and um, refresh my memory on the destiny and mechanics in that in that game, which helped a bit, but not as much as I had thought. But before we get into that, I do want to dive a bit into the inspiration mechanic. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't I um I don't see inspiration getting used all that much. And the general the general idea of it is you either have inspiration or you don't. Um, the GM awards it when people when people are suitably playing to their character's personality, and you can use that to roll with advantage. I've seen that. Um, I've also seen an outright inspiration die awarded for the same thing. Usually a D eight. But that's probably the idiosyncrasies between DMs and some house ruling in there. Probably when I ch when I checked to see the official ruling, it just it just said roll with advantage. I didn't see anything about an inspiration die. And if it's in U if it's in UA, I um I am not drunk enough to go through every issue of UA to check because I don't I don't think I don't remember seeing it in UA, and I don't remember seeing it in Tasha. Or in, or in Xanthar. As I said, it's probably idiosyncrasies of the DMs I've seen. Mm -hmm. But I, me personally, I have had the opinion on inspiration that I had about prof that I had about proficiencies in A D and D second, a decent idea that ha that didn't have enough time to cook. Which is which. I realize that's kind of redundant in this case, but the the big issue, I the big issue is that it's it was trying to be a um, narrative focused mechanic, but the, but um you have you have instances where it's too, where it's um it's too broad. You have some some it can be argued to be a little too a little too broad and a little too um. I guess flighty. Like I'm trying, I'm trying to figure out how how to word it, but there, but there isn't an, there isn't enough um. There is there isn't enough mechan um mechanical advantage to have people want to use it because, in most of the five E campaigns I've I've either played or run, it doesn't get used all that much. Um, uh, on, on top of that, um, because it is so vaguely defined um, you can either get a situation where a GM just doesn't award inspiration really ever because they either forget about it or don't feel like it reaches whatever their subjective analysis for the threshold is or it gets pigeonholed on whomever at the table seems to be the most uh, for lack of a better word the most thespian at the table 
The problem being with inspiration is that there's no means of mechanically or even narratively invoking it. There's no method for the player to say, you should, or I would argue that you should, give me this inspiration. And there's no mechanism on the DM side that says, when X conditions are met with any degree of specificity, inspiration is then awarded. And there are no mechanical hooks which function off of inspiration to keep it in the forefront of your mind. It's up there with things that plenty of mechanics can be sort of first drafted, stuffed into an RPG book to make them look a little bit fleshed out, but won't actually have any impact on the game because they, the, the GM is free to not use it, and the players have no real means or even a reason to bring it up at the table. Weather is, lo is like that. Even though weather is something that can be tremendously important in the context of resolving certain combat encounters or certain exploration activities, you, people don't really... There's no weather chart. There's nothing that says, here's how you determine the weather, here's how you alter the, the weather, here's some abilities which function based off of the weather, with one exception, call lightning. And so it doesn't get used at most tables. Some people are going to recognize its importance and its value. You know, some people, uh, what is it, the ROSR AD&D group that I'm in free, frequent contact with tell me that their method of resolving weather is whatever the weather is at the GM's house, uh, that, is, that is the weather that is currently active in the game, which is delightful. And it's a method of having people maintain an interest in weather and keep that kind of in their back pocket because it might impact some of their abilities and it might impact some of their activities across the course of the game. Inspiration has no such hook. Inspiration has no such reason to bring it up. There are plenty of other ways to ask for advantage and uh, there's there's no means of invoking it. So that's that's the issue. Now, I've seen Inspiration have some manner of def have some manner of defenders um, there's two counter arguments that that I that I often hear. One of them is the is comparing them to aspects in Fate, and the other one is is comparing them to hero points in, say, Mutants and Masterminds or Pathfinder or any number of games that have an extra effort system, which is a lot of indie games having having that. But I do, I um vehemently disagree on bo on both counts. Um, for a couple of reasons, I'll tackle the I'll tackle the aspects one first. Aspects in Fate have significantly more mechanical consequence because that because the aspect system is inherently built into the core sandbox. You can't run Fate without aspects, and the especially since you have the whole invoke or compel aspects for both players and DMs. And in the case of um, in the case of something like hero points, and and whatever whatever other um, extra effort system that you might that you might consider, whether it be edge and shadowrun, willpower in world of darkness, those have mechanical weight. In some cases, a very high mechanical weight. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, sometimes these sometimes these sorts of extra effort systems. Um, are are a are a are a glorified do over. Sometimes they sometimes they're um, sometimes they're a means of cheating, and sometimes they're a means of putting in an editor cut. It ultimately depends on the game. But I think th maybe it's just me, but I think the I think one of the big problems is the is the fact that at the end of the day, using inspiration is just giving yourself advantage on a roll. Something that you're going to be doing a lot of, anyways. So it does. It's not special. Mm -hmm. Whereas, whereas with something like hero points, something like willpower, you have a very lim you have a very limited resource. Even at high levels, you can't be sp you can't be spending huge amounts of willpower. Um, 
spending willpower in in World of Darkness games is a. Uh, I mean, it it it's definitely something you're going to do, but it's definitely something you're going to weigh very heavily. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, fate points in say Warhammer. If you're having to spend fate points, then you're then you're already in a bad situation as it is. <laughs> it, less being up shit creek and more like your boat has capsized, dumbass. <laughs> yeah. Whether it be spending them the normal way or burning them, which is which is the um, which is the most common use of them to, as a cheat as a cheat death option. But. <laughs> Now I've now I've made it I've made it clear that I have my that I have my issues with the whole advantage disadvantage thing. I'd say although um I'm not going to I don't want to go too far into that but the biggest issue I've all, I've always had is the um on one hand the swinginess of, of it and on the and on the other hand the the fact that I think it gets used a little too much. Um but when it, but when when it come when it comes to something like inspiration, the only, I uh, I ended up looking very very hard to see if there's to see if there's any class that could feasibly have inspiration as a as a as a def, as a defining or at least Im, or at least important thing to work with. And the only one I could come up with, and this, is, and I am really stretching this, is the paladin. Interesting choice. I I want to hear your 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 methodology behind this. Um, specifically specifically using inspiration as a as a workaround for the whole things that paladins can and can't do kind of thing. I remember it being suggested in I think it was the D, I think it was the DMs in some buried paragraph in the DMs guide. But um I tr I haven't read through I haven't read through the DMs guide in a in a while because my my most raw memory of reading through that is the oh samurai can just be reskinned paladins. What? Yeah, that was in the book. <laughs> I mm, mm, no <laughs> no no no. That's just. I mean, that almost sounds like someone heard the old meme about katanas just being reskinned masterwork bastard swords, and ran with it. It was it. It was specifically in the in the uh, section about fl about flavors of of, fa of fantasy. I mean, are they just trying to say that anyone who follows a rigid code is somehow or another a reskinned paladin? Oh, it's oh, it's better. This section was in this. This was in this. This was in a. The flavor of the flavor of fantasy that this was in was Wusha. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> but um, <laughs> but wait, it gets better. Oh, want... God damn it, Billy Mays, go back to your grave. I I want to read this verbatim for you so you can see why I don't go into this book as often as some people. Quote. Similarly, a class doesn't need new rules to reflect a cultural influence. A new name can do the can do the trick. A traditional Chinese wuxia hero might be a paladin who has a sword called the Oath of Vengeance, while a Japanese samurai might be a paladin with a particular oath of devotion that includes fealty to a lord among the among its tenets. A ninja is a monk who pursues way of the way of shadow. Whether called a wuzhen, a sukai, a swami, a wizard, a sorcerer, or warlock character, works just fine in a game inspired by medieval Asian cultures. I... Uh... It's exactly as I thought. Anybody who follows some sort of rigid code of conduct is just a reflavored paladin. That is what they are saying. And that is just... That's not what they're saying. 
that's, that's I'm sorry, that's not what they're saying. What they're saying is you could, if you wanted to, to if you need a shoe in for your samurai, reskin this. You that's, can that option is open to you. It's so misguided. It's not that misguided. Like these are thematically similar concepts. And if you're not in the business of designing a new class on your own or designing new mechanics on your own, certainly the uh, the designers of this particular game were not terribly proficient with that. And it's a fine option. It's not the option we want because we like more options. That's... We like more mechanics. There it's is the only one, there reason, is one huh? there is one significant problem I do I do have with I do have with that. And that that is how that is how you're how you're going to tackle the f the fact that sword sword and board is he is heavily fi is heavily favored by D by D and D's mechanics and you're not going to see a whole lot of samurai wielding shields. Not going to see any samurai wielding shields. That's Historically, not as big of a problem as you think it is. I mean, yeah, there, are there are plenty of doesn't, paladins uh, who don't... It doesn't and board that much. I see more people using uh, great weapons. Which has its... Which is which is its own set of pro own set of problems. I, I think we're we're getting lost yeah. in the weeds here, guys. Yeah. Yes. But get, I just want I just wanted to get that out of my system just for just well, admittedly for a bit of, for a bit of lulls. <laughs> but that but um the I am not I want to I want to make clear I am not I am not opposed to the, to the idea of bringing in some bring in some sort of some sort of narrative mechanic which is what it which is what I think inspiration is trying to do but if you're go, but if you want if you want to bring it in you can't just ha you can't just have it as oh this is optional no if you're going to put if you're going to put it in give people a reason to want to use it now we're coming to something substantial yeah which is narrative because this was first characterized as an extra effort mechanic which it sort of is but more specifically, this has a social component to it. It's internal. It's self-centered, in the in the literal sense in which you were looking at the at the character themselves and whether or not this plea for inspiration fits what it is that they're doing. Introspective, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, but I but it is a fundamentally it is a social mechanic. I, one one other thing that I've seen some people make comparisons to with this it with um inspiration is Thirteenth Age's one unique thing. I once again I don't I don't agree with that I don't agree with that either because the with the one unique thing it is blatantly designed to be nothing more than a story seed. I have no idea what that is. Um. The one unique thing is a is essentially a essentially a narrative piece within character creation in um, Thirteenth Age, and it's exactly what it says it is. It is one unique thing that your that your character has. Sometimes it's a personality trait. It can be it can be a it can be a um, tr some kind of trinket. It can be it can be something that happened in the past. It is just one thing that they have that's unique. It's a narrative hook. Mm -hmm. And. And this is something that I wish that I wish a lot more games would do. They put in a, in the core book for it, they put in a two-page um, thing, just going over different different degrees of good ideas, bad ideas when it comes to this this narrative hook, which is something I wish Fate would would do. Um, but but the the important thing to note there is that it's not. This is how it must be played. It's just here are some good ideas for what can be unique about characters, and here are some not as good ideas. But you're free to work, you know, anywhere you'd like. Thirteen yeah, days. I don't, very... I don't see that being relevant to inspiration as as used. The reason why the reason why I bring it up is because I have seen people um I have seen people make the comparison between the two. That nope, they're wrong and dumb. <laughs> 
Well, that's that's what we're saying that people are making some pretty poor comparisons. Yeah. I guess is the ultimate conclusion here. Right. <laughs> and we should go back to inspiration itself though. Yes. I'd, um, I'd s- I remember I think the I think the ul- the ultimate pr- the ultimate problem with something like inspiration as it is written or is it as it is written is when it is the fact that and we kind of we kind of touched on this when it's gone I don't miss it. Because and I do, th- I do think that if it, I do think that if it was doing something besides, bes- if it was doing something besides this w- this wide berth um, advantage that is some- that is summed up in a paragraph, I m- that might not be the case. But that neatly brings us to the inspiration and destiny approach that they have. Now they're not taking away how insp- how inspiration normally works. But they're at, they're adding to it with the destiny system. Now, when I first re- when I first found out about this, I thought that they were going to be taking some cues from the very underrated Star Wars Saga edition. That's not ex- that's not exactly the it doesn't exactly seem to be the case. Um, well, from my from my overview of the inspiration and destiny document here, uh what they essentially tried to do is is take what was already existing with inspiration and give it an actual mechanical hook something with a much more defined boundary than the vagueness that fifth edition already has of hey if you think x player is playing their character real good you give inspiration which is so vague as to be somewhat pointless whereas this gives the the destinies as a way of a metric mm-hmm. hey this person has this destiny whether it's one of the ones actually defined in the book or as they mention briefly and cover a little bit maybe you've gone ahead and made your own set of destinies uh, are they are they true to that destiny in this particular moment thing so intrinsic to that destiny that uh, you could make the decision of, yeah, that plays to this destiny really well. Here's your inspiration. Mm-hmm. So it's a much more defined uh, metric from what I'm looking at. And I, I want to check one. There's one thing I want to check to see if they to see if they made a small edit regarding how, regarding how it's used, which means I need to. Which means that I need to open up the book again. So ins- Let's see, tracking inspiration variant only players award inspiration. Okay, where the hell was? It? No. Um. The thing is, I, I, I don't think that the uh, the changes to inspiration itself may be enough. Um, um, okay. We should tell folks how they're how the current how there the destiny one, thing there interacts. Is, there is one there is one thing that they did that they um that they did cha- that they did change from from core to level up. At least unless I'm misreading this in core. Um, only the person who had inspiration could use it to get that advantage. Whereas the way they've got it written in the uh, do- in the document, whenever you or an ally with that you can see within sixty feet makes an attack roll, saving throw, or an ability check, you can spend it to grant adva- You can spend inspiration to grant advantage. That sounds like so long as they're within sixty feet and and visible. Mm-hmm. You can instead throw your inspiration at their rolls, which now almost sounds like bardic inspiration, but that's a different, different thing. It's the I would I would actually say that this that this is um, that just this little change is a step forward in get in giving more of an incentive to actually use it. Yes, but I. I think it, I think you're going to run into the same 
issue of without it, you're not really going to miss it either. But Well, you are, based on the... Because uh, you're not going to be accessing the other features that are present in this document mm -hmm. without that without that inspiration and you're you are right ash we should we should get into that so since you had brought it up why, why don't you why don't you set the stage on on its use all righty so basically you choose something approximating an archetype for your inspiration something that your character values or embodies they embody chaos or value chaos it's a strange thing to value coming of age devotion do Dominion, that was an interesting one that I noticed. Uh, excellence, so these vague archetypal concepts, revenge, the underdog, things that you embody or pursue or value, as mentioned, that you're going to select and decide, this is what my character is focused on. So already, you have a particular narrative hook for this sort of thing. Uh, can you pause the recording real quick? I can. And we're back. All right. So where was I before the interruption of dogs? Yes. Yeah, so you choose a particular destiny that your character is going to embody. Destinies are things like archetypes, values, goals, etc. They're sort of generic in their own right, but they are they have enough solidity to them that they provide a narrative hook for your character to invoke. Mr. DM, I am engaged in an act of devotion. I am engaged in an act of revenge. And they give several examples for each, uh, for each particular each particular destiny that you actually select. They're like things like complete a quest, keep a promise to your own detriment, uh, things that you could, which are broad, too broad to have a specific mechanic for them which is fine, but they are not so broad that they couldn't be expressed in language. And because they're expressed in language, you, the player, can express them in language. What that allows you to do is that allows you to access inspiration and the specific inspiration feature for your specific destiny. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, the Dominion. I selected one that I... Actually, let me select a different one, because I marked some of these in blue that I particularly liked. No, I marked the fulfillment ones in blue because I like those. I didn't mark one in yellow because that, that one was okay. So, the Dominion one has something called Source of Inspiration, Leadership. You draw inspiration from taking charge and directing what needs to be done. You gain inspiration whenever you lead by example or convince a group of NPCs to act against their own interests in order to complete a difficult task. So, you know, you go to the uh, you, you go to the king or you go to a rival domain holder and you tell them, <laughs> buddy, buddy, you're going to move your troops to the northern border and you're going to stop the orcs from flooding into the castle or so help me, I'm going to take your kingdom. And then I'm going to do it. Now I'm going to put you on the front line if I have to do that. And then you get inspiration. Mm -hmm. And then you have a specific inspiration feature. Study deliberation. With a level head and measured logic, you objectively determine the best path forward. You may spend your inspiration and minutes deliberation to determine the results of an upcoming plan of action. And there's an interesting tag on the end of this, because that could be... That could be kind of vague. You don't exactly know what would happen there. As the augury spell is the ending tag of that sentence. Mm -hmm. So you get a wheel, woe, neither or both. Which, augury not being the best possible spell to hook that onto, I still thought it was an interesting choice. And an interesting ex execution of that particular feature. Mm -hmm. From there, so that's that's what you specifically get. That's the main draw for inspiration when it comes to destiny, and that's the main way in which this particular document changes how inspiration works. It's not just adding it so that you can give it to other people and adjust other people's roles and stuff like that. You have this separate, unique feature, which is, again, tied to narrative archetypes of sorts. 
And then from there, you have a fulfillment feature for fulfilling your destiny. Each one of these, they treat it like a, a narrative mechanic. They treat it like a story arc mechanic where mm -hmm. if you fulfill a final act or embody something so thoroughly, you will gain a fulfillment feature. So, for instance, Dominion would be become the ruler of a nation, large city, or other sizable population. Become a divine figure with numerous followers. Reach the top of a massive organization. So already we're finding narrative reasons to pursue things which you often would not otherwise think to do within the game, which I find fascinating. I find we're gonna, I'll talk about that later, though, with these folks. Uh, you have the fulfillment feature, absolute power. Either through respect or fears, you have become the uncontested ruler of your dominion, and most simple orders you give are followed without question. Any checks you make to influence your subjects are made with advantage. In addition, you gain the lawful alignment, and you emit a strong lawful aura for the purposes of any feature, spell, or trait that det detects or affects lawful creatures. And there's one, there's one final note on the fulfillment feature which is that you can get this fulfillment feature upon fulfilling a final act or whatever have you, mm -hmm. but if you reach 16th level without actually having done that, you gain the fulfillment feature anyway because you, you've just been embodying this for so long that you're going to get it anyways, which is interesting. So you could take advantage of this feature beforehand through roleplay, but if you don't th do that, you will eventually later down the way later down the line you will access it and that's a, that's the structure of the destiny mechanic yeah now give now given the, given that um i could see like i could be the smart ass and make and make a joke that these that they basically incorporated loyalty missions from from um from any decent bioware game <laughs> into 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 their setup but it is but it does give it does give people a um a reason to uh, a reason to chase some some sort of some sort of story arc um now ob obviously if obviously if somebody's running a murder hobo thing this isn't this is going to run count this kind of system is going to run counter to that but unless they go for chaos, I think mm -hmm. chaos Correct. might actually help there. But what it one one thing that I do find interesting with some of them is the is the whole you get you gain an alignment instead instead of instead of picking from one of the nine at character creation because I think we've said I think we've said said in the past that. The it, the issue with the issue with the alignment system is more how it is more how it's um how it's how it's used in context rather th rather than the system on just on its own. Um, I don't think there's anything in the destiny document that says you don't um you don't pick one when you make your character. I think you still do that. It's just when you um. When you embody the destiny, they, in some capacity, this might change it. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't this way before, the, then it becomes X Y Z. Yeah, yeah. And honestly, that's that's a more organic way of of having alignment change occur than forcing an alignment check during something that runs counter to the alignment the character holds. Alignment checks are always kind of strange it's as as a person uh, who both dm'd and played uh, i much more often saw and performed this sort of progression people would have their alignments on their character sheets from when they cre created characters but as behavior of the character went on if that character behavior was shifting away from that alignment i'd be like so it looks like your character is becoming more x um it, if they continue to act in this fashion i'm going to ask you to change your alignment on your paper because they no longer have this 
this chaotic bent or this lawful bent or this evil bent or this good bent. Yeah. But uh, but um, the implementation of alignment in, in these situations isn't isn't is is not the deal breaker that say um, alignment use in th alignment use with certain classes in third edition was for me. Can't be a druid unless you're neutral. Mm. Don't you love third and the fact that if you at all stop being lawful, you immediately go from paladin to blackguard? <laughs> I ha um, I had multiple experiences with that DM. Oh well, what's I, I thought it was really funny that the way. They tried to rectify that situation with paladins was to introduce the 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 four paladin archetypes. The the, the paladin like paladin of freedom and paladin <laughs> tyranny. I was like ha 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 Which uh, felt like a felt like a bandage. Um Yeah, it was a bandage on a gaping axe wound. The the only re the only reason I the the only um the only way I got out of de out of dealing with the fall or die DM is two things, one, um, I I um. I decided to invoke I decided to invoke a, I decided to have as my character's backstory he's he's ha he had a phoenix feather st embedded in him as a embedded him as a kid and because of that. Every time he di every time he dies, he just pops right back up. Two, I decided to make I decided to make my paladin so lo so lawful that I went so lawful and, and push it so push it so far that he j that he, that he was just annoyed at the at any time I would go on the heroic speeches <laughs> that he just stopped. Did um, you pull lawful stupid or did? No, that's I, usually no, a good I way pulled, to get on their nerves. No, what I pulled, and <laughs> you'll and you will definitely appreciate that. You'll definitely appreciate this, Zen. I pulled Zengar Zonvolt. Whatewa Zengar Zonvolt. Waga Zan Kanto ni tatenu mono nash. Yeah, I yes, went that far. The blade I... that, the blade that cleaves evil, and nothing can stand before his zonkanto. Because I figure, if he's going to annoy me with this, then I'm going to annoy him back. <laughs> Did you have a best friend who was blonde and turned into your horse? No. <laughs> oh, you you didn't complete the the duo. No, no zonkanto Tatsumaki for you. <sighs> <laughs> he was he wouldn't let me you he I wasn't allowed to have a paladin's mount. So I so he doesn't have pa a paladin's mount. Zengar has a buddy that literally turns into a horse for him. The awesome cider is just ridiculous. Yeah. But and but anyway. But uh, that's that's rails. Yeah. Anyway. At that at that le at now it it's there seem Zen, you mentioned sorry, not Zen. Ash, you mentioned that there's the implication that you more that you more or less have a destiny fulfilled when you're it when you're around fifteenth level, right? No, 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 no. It's so the way it works is you could fulfill this destiny at any given point. So for instance, my player say my West Marches players are engaging with this. Mm -hmm. And around somebody who has chosen Dominion probably is going to gain access to that around let's see here, they build a stronghold somewhere in between fifth and sixth, fifth and seventh level, most likely, uh earlier in Lords of Brachus. Substantially earlier in Lords of Brachus. And they might come up with um how do I put this? Yeah, and they, they probably move on to a larger domain about a level later. So they would gain access to that somewhere in between 6th and 8th level. But the, the Destiny document assumes, listen, if you don't get this, if you haven't had the opportunity, 
or your GM just doesn't want to give it to you for whatever reason, at some point you've been embodying this ideal or this archetype or whatever have you for so long that you gain the feature at 16th level. It doesn't mean you've fulfilled the destiny, just that you have the feature at that mm -hmm. point. Yeah. Um, if there is one, if there is one thing I'd I'd have liked to see, t um, um, tackled, it's the question of what of um switching. Um, um, it it actually does tackle that. It says that at a level at a level up, you can choose to follow a different destiny. Which is which is certainly the case. What I'm what I'm more th what I'm more thinking about is it is the possibility of someone, of someone going through mo someone going through multiple destinies, especially if they're integrating some rules for epic level play. Uh, you can only have one fulfillment feature. For instance, they went into they went into the fact that once you gain your fulfillment feature, you could actually choose another destiny. And gain the inspiration feature for that, but you can yeah. only ever have one fulfillment feature. Yeah, and it's yeah. the one that you—it's the one that you gain, gain. Now, yeah. Once you get that, that's locked in. It's it specifically says right here under changing your destiny, uh, you lose any features provided by your current destiny and select a new destiny, gaining its source of inspiration, and then specifically its inspiration features. So oh, yes, developers are, if we're taking notes from these people, they are thinking quite far ahead. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which I am a big fan of. It feels refreshing. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes now, when it comes to when it comes to these, um, I could I could but I um I do think that. I know I made the joke about about loyalty missions, but I do th I do think that that can that can present a pot a potential not necessarily an issue, but I guess the better word would be a complication because you because you could have a situation where all where all of a sudden the narrative is focused on, is focused on um, one character over over others. Um, I think I I, do, I don't understand. Wait, what? What's the start of this? I don't understand the reference. Um, I was re I was referencing how the whole fulfill fulfilling a de fulfilling a destiny could ap could appear to some as akin to the akin to the um support char support character focused quest that someone might see in say Mass Effect or Dragon Age. Um. Okay. And, and um, a potential issue I could see with that. I'm not saying this is what would happen, and I'm, and it's prob it probably wouldn't even happen at my table. Is, so is um, so is all of a su all of a sudden the all of a sudden the um, campaign that that the players have been on is fo is focused on one on one player to fulfill their destiny. But I get the feeling this is something that's best tackled in a GM section to avoid this particular trap. Why is that wrong or a problem? Um, I'm I'm reminded of, I'm reminded of what um, of why in a lot of in the majority of cyberpunk games that I've played, there's always a air of trepidation. Whenever, ha whenever hacking mechanics are brought in, because more often, because there's plenty of there's plenty of instances where you have it where the ha where um the game ends up becoming just a duet between the hacker and the GM, and I I have seen this happen plenty of times in um stuff like Shadowrun and Cyberpunk. I don't think that answers my question. So when we're looking at something which is as broad as a mission or a campaign focus, which could get focused, you know, so you have the, we'll pick an example. The player has the Dominion Destiny, and either through player actions, the GM's decision, or the party's decision, uh, the actions going forward tend to focus or have a focus on that particular character. Why is that a bad thing? 
It's it's. I'm not. I'm. What? I, this is the reason why I was talking about potential. It's. I could. It's one of those things where I could see a D, a DM putting too much focus on that character, and instead of um instead of divvying up the focus relatively evenly. That's restating the question, sort of. Why? What I'm asking is, why is that a bad thing? I'm not. I'm not saying it. I'm not saying it is or it isn't. Just that it just the just the potential of it. And admittedly, this admittedly this is me. This is me. Um, playing playing way too far of long ball. So it may not even it may not even come up. I'll be completely honest. I'm lost in this particular part of the conversation. <laughs> yeah. Here's the easy. You called it a you called it a trap. You had a few negative con attached a few other negative connotations to it, and you compared I it, it I to. Thought, I thought I had. I thought I had some. I thought I had something, but it's um. But it what it wasn't as it. But as I kept thinking about it, it wasn't as strong as as init, as it initially appeared. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not trying to trap you, or or I'm not trying to prosecute you. It's the. Uh, I wouldn't know what the subject is, yeah. but that's that's fine. Yeah. Um, Here we go. Now with some, with I'd now with some of with some of them, I I um I do th I do think that some that something that definitely helps the entries for each of these is the mo is the motivation chart and. Yeah, it is very. It is very much in the same sp in the same spirit as as all the charts you see in all the um, background entries in core. But the reason the reason why I think that I think this can I think this can help in this case is to uh, to allow for different interpretations of each um, destiny, because a phrase like say chaos, whether we like it or not. Has baggage. Which is weird. Because it didn't have the same negative baggage it has in current era when it was first introduced in ancient Greece. Well, there's a couple reasons why I, why I say that. One is um is we've all we've all had to deal with the with that chaotic neutral player at least once. You mean the chaotic psychotic, or as I call them, the fuckbags? The fuckbags, the nenads, the people who pick chaotic neutral to do dumb things and then ju and then justify it by saying that by saying that they're playing their character. The original uh, lolso randoms. Yeah. Um. And two. I don't know when this started, but a lot of people. Made the, a lot of people started making the assumption that chaos and randomness are are sin, are um, synonyms of each other. But I mean, they're pretty close. They're they're close, but not. But I wouldn't. But um. But someone. But someone being lol random is not is is not necessarily um. Is not necessarily chaos in the in the alignment sense, because much in this, and I think I think a, a key point is the is the fact that one of the um one of the possible motivations on chaos is freedom, which is cer which is certainly the ca is certainly the case, and the chaotic good character is often seen as the vigilante type. But I th I think a lot of I think a lot of people associate the um, when they see the word chaos, they think of the negative connotations of that word, and some of it has to do with having a lot of um, villainous characters and factions who use that word. Looking at you, forty k, and <laughs> well, let's and let's be fair though. When it comes to forty k, that is chaos. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's even hearkening back to chaos of Grecian legend being the birthplace of. The void from which everything else came. Yeah. And the and the guy who get and the guy who gives you really terrible boons in Hades, but I'm getting ahead of myself. They're not. 
they're not terrible, and that's a different rail. <laughs> I just had I just had to be a smartass at least once, at least. But the but it's for it's for the it's for the same re- it's for the same reasons that with a with a lot of um especially especially with the more mimetic end of of the of um of tabletop gaming certain certain alignments are more associated with the me- with their meme interpretation than the actual one um I just like the fact that chaos has misanthropy as a choice because now you have all the chunies pulling their chuny. Chuny. Dark and edgy chuny chunibyo. Eighth grade syndrome. What? Yeah. Um. Yeah. Um. Can you? Can you explain? Ch- chuny chunibyo is is a Japanese term meaning literally. Middle school second uh second class disease. It it it's the person who's dark and edgy for the sake of being dark and edgy, or the person who has uh powers sealed in their right arm, or the person who wears the eye patch because if they ever took it off, the world would end. Misanthropy is for all of those people. <laughs> In any case, I think any of the negative <laughs> any of the negative issues that people are going to run into when it comes to people behaving in a in a weird fashion mm-hmm. and I, I I don't interact with many of those players. They don't last long at my tables. I'm not sure if I've even had any of them of those specific players and stuff like that. Uh, it's certainly been a problem and was. The solution to it was granted. Or the explanation for it was granted back as far as Greyhawk, where Gygax said, "Listen, chaotic simply means you may uh, backstab the party or or harm them in some capacity for your own selfish reward. It's you know, chaotic people are murderers, bastards, and thieves, and stuff like that. But there's no special rule or special exception for a party which includes or is composed of." chaotic characters it's just that this is this is the description of people who you know they might they might backstab you they're typically selfish they might do something for the against to your detriment for their own personal gain that's not something that you really have to worry about here because you're looking at things like you're, you're looking at the behaviors which are recommended and prescribed for gaining inspiration instead of any kind of weird role-playing history. This is one of the reasons why I just want to get new players entirely from the, which are not attached to previous play in the, in the RPG hobby for a number of reasons, but one of them being, I I just want to avoid 40 years of stupid arguments and misconceptions and misconceptions stacking on top of stupid arguments and, all that, all that other stuff. Uh, they, Forty years of baggage mm-hmm. of, of people insisting on taking the worst possible interpretation of everything and iterating on it. All you have to do is look at behaviors like successfully lie to or humiliate an authority figure, commit a punishable crime, indulge in base players to Ill- ill-advised extremes. So you have things like instead of the player saying. Oh well, I murder I murder my fellow party member because that's cooler. I firebomb the tavern. It's like, no, I I took too much cocaine. I I'm told just the telling you to be department. Han Solo. That's all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a smuggler bastard. And so, if you are the sort of person who is going to be going over these with a fine tooth comb and deciding what play behaviors are acceptable at the table or not. And I have my own thoughts on those, but uh, that's ill-defined and probably irrelevant. All you have to do is examine what's port forth. You don't have to examine 40 years of RPG baggage about what does it mean to be chaotic. You just have to look at successfully lie to or humiliate an authority figure, commit or a punishable crime. Like uh, The angry GM doesn't allow evil characters at his, at his table, so if he were to use uh, the, the level up 
play test or whatever, whatever the final iteration is, I could see him saying, uh, no characters with chaotic destinies. Mm -hmm. Allow chaotic destiny. Uh, the, 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 the point I think, uh, Mildred was trying to make is that people may balk at chaos because of the previous connotations. And I, and I understand that your solution is, well, just read the source material and go from that. And that's actually a pretty good solution. Yeah. You, you can't save those people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um. You, you can inform them that they can fix their maladaptive behaviors in order to join the table, but you can't fix you. You cannot fix those people. Yeah, I would. I would say that the inclusion of something like destiny um, highlights all the more import all the more importance of some of of a motif that I've um, I've been I've been seeing getting significantly more traction over the over the last few years, and that is a session zero. Um. Oh. So some some G, some GMs and some designers will go will go through that before the, before they even start the campaign proper. Um, and there are some there are some games that are that, and this isn't the only game that is ver that is very much geared towards having some mechanics for a session zero. Um, the cipher system does that as well, especially with certain aspects of of its um character creation. But with the whole, the fact that with the with the sentence character creation that it has, um, there's out el there's elements of t of tying say the player to your left or to your right at the at the table with so with some fact related to your fo related to your focus your type or um something else. Um. Now when it comes to when it came when it came to the um features. With the destinies, did it, did any of you see any that that you that could be considered a little too useful? Maybe the wealth one. At least it's fulfillment. But I think the fulfillment for wealth is going to be. Uh, something that you won't as easily come across as some of the other fulfillments. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't... I generally don't evaluate those. I, I will... It would take a fairly extraordinary mechanical advantage or benefit to outweigh the fact that these are not... These are... These are rewards for accomplishments. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which are simply built into the core of the game. But the obviously the um the insp the inspiration f features those those ones I don't I don't think there's going to have this this level up that level of um over useful. Comp it's the f the argument could be made when it comes to the features, but I'd say I'd say the fact that the feature is the end of a of essentially a story arc for a character. Um, yeah, none, none of the inspiration features I see would be broken. They're all very, very tempered by the things you have to do to get inspiration in the first place. And also, since you're going to be using the, the narrative and mechanical hook of your destiny pretty often, it looks like, depending on what destiny you take and where you are. Again, if you're in the middle of of uh, nowhere, some of these destinies are going to be a little harder to pull inspiration from than others. Um, and then the, they're all they're all small things. Mm -hmm. um, looking at the underdog's inspiration feature, um, you know, whenever you are an ally, you can see fails an insight check. You can use a reaction and spend in your inspiration to immediately learn any information that would have been gained by a successful insight check. So it's it's basically a, a, a 
again, extra, extra effort mechanic that now actually has a a reason for it to have a specific purpose rather than just the, the general application of inspiration as advantage on any role. Um, and in, and in this case, I think, I think, uh, the inspiration features are likely to be used more often than generic inspiration. I'd say, I, I definitely say that, especially since a good, a good chunk of them are not as selfish as the original core. That's what, that's why I highlighted that slight change to inspiration rules at the start. Mm hmm But I, I don't see any of these actually being, um, I don't see any of them be being overpowered in any fashion. And again, the, the fulfillment features might be extreme in some cases, but not because but but it as uh as it is you're fulfilling a destiny mm -hmm. or reaching level sixteen, which in and of itself is a pretty big achievement. Um these fulfillment features are are earned. Very much so. Uh, yeah, these are rewards for campaign scale activities. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's it's the same type of reward you would see for carrying through a, a year long <laughs> campaign and finally getting to the BBEG and smashing him into dust. <laughs> yeah, I I carved a domain out of the wilderness and now I gain this other feature to commemorate it. No. And as far as the wealth fulfillment feature, um that ended up reminding me of the whole um, panache prudence thing in fantasy craft. Just the li just the lifestyle rule where, you, where um, e where every day every day you do you um do end up. You si whenever you gain s whenever you gain silver because silver is the standard in fantasy craft, not um gold. You uh -huh. get you um you sit you put aside you put aside a stake of a certain percentage, and. And every day you get you ge you generate a certain amount just because just because of your savings. Um, yeah. And when when it comes to when it comes to so when it comes to some of the other when it comes to some of the others, um, I'd s there there's definitely there's definitely some that. One could, that one could argue lean lean a little bit towards certain cl certain classes, but even even that's some um, even that's still open to plenty of interpretation. And when it comes it's when it comes to the wealth one, depending on the type of fantasy that's being run, I I um I prob I probably I'd probably house rule that out. Like if I'm run if I'm running a more on the borderlands where people are get where you're going to be out in the wilderness a lot more often than not. Then yeah, and yeah, especially if you're dealing with one where a setting where banks aren't really a thing yet. But beyond but beyond that, there's. I don't see why that last issue one would be a problem. Ooh, that's something I wanted to get to at some point because we've had a little bit of the discussion beforehand about things like implied setting and how I value it and maybe other people don't value it as much, but I treat it as like, I don't, when I'm designing a game, I'm like, I don't care what your setting is. There is, there is the setting of this game and the, and the features therein. And when you begin chopping that up, it is, it is you detracting from, the world that the game produces and the creative freedom that's provided within that particular world or whatever, within the confines of the game that the rules produce and things of that sort. And, and I am interested in social mechanics like this because I think they say something about your characters and the type of people they're going to be playing. I intuit that characters in this game are interested in the domain scale 
are interested in, in producing and being movers and shakers, not in purely reductionist ways, like I go in to a dungeon and I, uh, I kill everything. I'm pretty good at killing everything, and that's and then I take a long rest. I'm just as good as killing everything as I was, yes, at the start of my last long rest. And uh, and that's you know I'm ready to go killing things again. No, 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 this has a number of features and a number of focuses and goals, which are scaled far above the individual level. They go to a and the tactical level even. They go to a strategic level. Things like the, uh, <laughs> you know, taking the wealth example, become the head of a large and successful business, amass at least 100,000 gold pieces, obtain a legendary magic item, acquire a priceless treasure. This is interesting to me. This says something about the setting that is produced by following the confines of this game. Mm -hmm. Um. I would say, but I, the thing, the thing with, oh, hang on. Nope, nope, you're back. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Sorry about, sorry about that. There was a bit, there was a bit of a derp on Discord's part and I ended up disconnecting and reconnecting for some random ass reason because technology hates me. It should be like that sometimes. Um. Some something that I do that um I do hope I do hope is expand is and obviously they weren't able to expand upon expand upon it as much in the in this set in this particular setup but I hope with I hope with a more developed book they sh they show a few more show a few more examples on how this on how this thing is implemented or even show even show a example character fulfilling a given destiny. Interesting. Um, I mean, there there is the, there is the set of examples that are that are highlighted in red text, so so it's clear that they that they want to be able to focus on them. Um, Ash, you had mentioned that there were a few you had highlighted as st as standouts. Which ones were they? Okay, so first up was Chaos, and it wasn't just because it was at the very beginning. It's because, of course, referencing again the Chronicles of Amber and my undying love for them. Yes, I'm on my read through. We I started a book club in my server, and we are we finished Nine Princes in Amber uh, the other day, and. Uh, we are now on, for this month, we're on, was it The Guns of Avalon? I might have read ahead again, but that's a that's story for another day. <laughs> might have read ahead again. I'm only six books ahead of everybody else. No big deal. Well, I'm only four books ahead of everybody else. It's just, oh, you know, I, oh, I okay. You're, past it. you're taking your time. I got it. Yes, I am taking my time. <laughs> so I actually highlighted, for this reason, I highlighted... The inspiration feature of Chaos in red for bad, because I dislike it, but I highlighted the blue as good as, as something that I was relatively interested in. So with Chaos, uh, the inspiration, once again, going back to for giving everybody a refresher, the structure of these different destinies is you have a specific inspiration feature and you have according to your destiny, a list of things you can do which provide you with inspiration that are thematically appropriate to it. And then on top of that, you have a destiny fulfillment feature, which is, I completed some larger, long-spanning goal, and now I am particularly cool because of it. So for Chaos, the inspiration, go the methods of gaining inspiration are things like successfully lie to or humiliate an authority figure, Commit a punishable crime, indulge in base ple pleasures to ill-advised extremes. Uh, Doing which, too much cocaine. Got yeah, it. too much cocaine. Do do too much cocaine. Specifically, too much. That's why I and said it, to, to to too much cocaine. Exactly. 
Inspiration feature is ingenious double talk. Undaunted by momentary setbacks, you twist conversations in any direction with inspired turn of phrase and confusing double talk. Whenever you or a friendly creature you can hear fails a deception or persuasion check, you may spend your inspiration as a reaction to undo any consequences of that fail check. This goes back to social mechanics and something I hope to discuss one day, either in the context of my own design, uh, like Lords of Brackus and how I plan to implement it, or hopefully something that's provided by these folks, but that, that that's for another day. But I really do hope to discuss social mechanics. That, that to me is cool, but I was hoping for something slightly less social. I didn't... I didn't see that as being particularly aligned with chaos was my problem. That feels very much like smoothing the waters, and I didn't know... I couldn't make a positive argument for myself for that particular... I wanted something like chaos as a metaphysical force in the universe coming to bear in a, in a specific activity, which is why... Because I because that feature is cool. I could see that being a feat. I could see that being a class feature, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I think it's I think it's cool. I was hoping for something else when it came to chaos and fulfilling your destiny fulfilled that. Pun intended. The fulfillment feature. Oh, sorry. The fulfillment qualifications are things like greatly destabilize a nation or extremely large organization, subvert or trick a deity level entity, upset the status quo for a vast number of people. This is what I'm excited about. And the fulfillment feature follows through with that. It's called Agent of Chaos. The winds of chaos flow through you and everything you do. Whenever you roll one or more dice to determine the damage of an attack or spell or the random effects of a spell or feature, that's exciting, you may choose to re-roll those dice. If you do, you must use the new rolls. In addition, you gain the chaotic alignment, etc., etc., Strong chaotic aura for anything that affects chaotic creatures, etc., etc. So that I'm particularly interested in because that says, mm, no, 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 chaos is here with you. You are Sinbad, and Eris is riding on your heels, occasionally whispering in your ears and manipulating your actions. And the particular inclusion of not just damage dice or for like an attacker or a spell. Because that's that's like Savage Attacker and some other features. That's pretty simplistic. But allowing you to also edit the random effects of a spell or feature. That excited me because I'm working on a... In Shilmas Valley, we have the... Uh, which is a hex crawl product I'm currently working on. One of the... Well, a lot of the secondary classes have randomized features. Like the herbalist can find different kinds of herbs if they happen to roll well for a random check, and then they roll random to on a randomized list to see what herb they get. Ditto for... Uh, and then there's all these other classes which have dice pools, basically. Secondary classes, dice pools, effectively, that they can use to manipulate some of these outcomes. Scholars, trappers, survivalists, etc., etc. So the fact, the inclusion of that, where it's like, you could attach that to a teleport spell... You could attach that to a random encounter table or a spell creation role. You know, these are this is a wide spanning mechanical hook, whereas beforehand it would have just applied to I I cast fireball or I roll an attack and I'm not happy with my feature. It's this is something where it's like, oh, the with the chaos aligned wizard, Merlin is in his tower, or wherever else he might be. And he decides that he doesn't like the spell that's beginning to form in front of him. So he adds a little bit of the ingredient of chaos and is going to re-roll to see what qualities of the spell he particularly gets. This is a, like I said, this is a mechanic whose hooks stretch far and wide and you can attach it to so many different features in the game. It's It, it excites me. Uh, now... Given now, um, given that, given that, I'd say, I'd say it, I'd say the, 
I'd say this particular in, this particular in thing is a net positive, especially since I, you know how we said earlier that that um it, that we if inspiration was gone that we wouldn't that we wouldn't have the sensation of missing it. Would it be fair to say that that doesn't really apply with um with the destiny system that something would be felt missing if this thing wasn't if it wasn't included? Can you say that again? That's what that's what Ash was saying earlier. That because of things such as the inspiration and fulfillment features and the the actual narrative and mechanic hooks included in each destiny, um, excluding this would act would actively feel like something was missing. Yeah. Um, no, it, def it definitely fit. It definitely fits the role of le of level up. Um, I realized this was a sh this was a shorter episode, but there's not a whole. But beyond th beyond that, and beyond the narrativist end of things, the there's not a whole lot else to cover. Um, fortunately, next week we'll be getting to something a li a little more in our more traditional um, habits, and we'll be and it and we'll be dealing with spellcasting again. So that's so that's something to look forward to. But until then. On behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay fucking frosty, everybody. <laughs>